kid. Are you listening? <laughs> and I say very loudly back. And I hear my friend, who I'd never met before that day, say to me, good, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. And then he gets up, he walks out of that room, he pulls the door shut, leans his head against the glass, and just breaks down crying, which we all know is a sign of great weakness. Uh-uh. Baby, I think it's a sign of great strength. I mean, if you're crying at every party, we probably need to talk, okay? <laughs> and that, that may be too much emotion, maybe. But to occasionally, just baby, you let it rip and you need someone where they are. That's what's really going on here. Jack wept. And one of the nurses came over to him, got down on her knees, looked up at the celebrity, and she said, Mr. Buck, are you okay? And he says, I'm not sure. The little boy won't make it, will he? And the nurse, and this is the expert, looks back up and says, Mr. Buck, there is absolutely not a chance. When this news comes into our life regarding our work, our relationships, our health, our children, our parents, whatever it may be, not a chance, not a chance, what we do next matters. What this person does, he takes it home, he cries, he prays, he reflects, and then he journals on a simple question. What more can I do? What more can I do? What more can I do? There's two ways to ask this. One is to throw your hands up in the air and say, what more can I do, man? I've done it all, I'm done. That's one way. But the way Jack chose to do it was completely out of love, knowing his why, knowing, knowing that there was one more thing to be done, that one person can in fact change the world through their life. What more can I do? And after getting his answer, he sleeps on it, wakes up in the morning, and delivers. The following morning, now it's Monday, I'm laying here in this hospital bed, bored. The door opens up, somebody walks in, they sit down, they pull the chair up close, and then I hear this voice. Kid, wake up. I'm back. You are going to live. You are going to survive. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. <laughs> Kid, see you soon. And the following day, he keeps his promise and he shows back up. For five months, this man kept serving and coming back and inspiring and impacting. This man changed my world, I think directly in many regards. He led to a miracle called homecoming. It was many people's work and many people's prayers and many people's love and encouragement, but Jack Buck stood up high, led to that picture up there. And then a month after homecoming, man, we had to have a party. So we went downtown, we went to a place called Bush Stadium. That night, I had 13 Cokes, okay? 13 Cokes. But, but every single one of them came, not from my hands, because I, I can't hold anything. They came from my mom's. So Jack sees this little boy, he probably drinks too much, but he can't even do it himself because mom is holding that cup up to him with a little straw. He sees a little boy in a wheelchair who can't get out of it. Roy has tried, and the therapists are trying, but the little kid can't walk. He sees a little boy without fingers, with scars and splints all busted up. He sees it all, friends. And he sees the other side of the coin. And there is always the other side, always. When you look at the screens today, what jumps off it at you? Besides the goofy cardinal hat. The big, goofy smile. Do you see it? Cover it up. Do you still see it? And the eyes. The little dude is lit up. He's fired up. 
So Jack sees the joy and the hope, the spirit. Andy sees the pain and the brokenness and the challenges and what he knows to be true and what you all know to be true, they walk side by side. They come in step, they come together, they come married. Jack chooses to take home both, cry about both, pray about both, and then reflect on a singular question. What more can I do? What more can I do? What more can I do? As a consultant, as a parent, as a child, as a friend in the community, what more can I do? Journal on it, answer it, take action. That's his secret. The following day, I'm at home with my mom and dad. Mom goes out, she comes back in with this baseball. Below the ball from a guy named Ozzy Smith is a note from a fellow named Jack Buck. And the note says, <laughs> the note says, kid, if you want a second baseball, all you have to do is send a thank you letter to the man who signed the first one. Just one problem with that, Jack. What's the problem, Sensi? That's right, man. You don't have hands. You don't have fingers. You can't even hold the soda. You sure can't hold a pen. Do you think my mom and dad were trying to get me to write yes or no? You know, what they used to do every day is to walk into my room. They would get eye level with me like this. And my mom would try to hand me a pen, and she would say to me, baby, baby, when you learn how to write again, you get to go back to school. <laughs> mom, I'll try when I'm up for it. I'll try. <laughs> Do you think a little fella in Missouri is longing to go back to school? Is that his great goal in life? I ignored them. But what Jack did so beautifully is he did not call me up to where he was. He met me where I was, and there's a great difference between the two. He came all the way down to where this little kid was, met him in his why, asked the question, what more can I do, delivered this baseball, changed my world, changed my world. Do you think I wrote the note? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Let your yes be heard today. Yes. Mailed off that note. A couple days later, I got a second baseball with a second note. Kid, if you want a third baseball, all you have to do, Sensi, is send a thank you letter to the guy who signed the second. Mama, bring me a pen. Because motivation is an inside job. And baby, I got my inspiration now. It's baseball. It is baseball. It's these little balls. I wrote another note, waited around, got a third baseball with a third note that said, what do you think it says? Louder, please. Kid, if you want a fourth baseball, all you have to do. This goes on day after day for the entire summer. And by the end of it, Isn't that cool? One man sent 60 baseballs to a little kid in a wheelchair with bright red skin and no chance, some people think, changing his world, allowing him to realize, yes, indeed, you can write again. You can, in fact, write again. He had to believe first. I followed. He gave those 60 baseballs, which led back to grade school. Grade school was followed by high school, uh, four years there, followed by nine years at university. <laughs> where, you tripped your way forward a little bit, but somehow you survived and you endured, you showed a little bit of spirit, and then somehow you graduate. And then graduation night, Sensi. Graduation night, one of the great miracles happens. The, the miracle, I think, is love. Love shows up. I, I never dated in grade school, middle school, high school, or college. That, that's a pretty long drought, okay? 
like about a lifelong drop, a graduation night, she arrives on the scene. And she's beautiful. And you've seen her already, so you know how the story ends. But as a kid, I didn't know how it was going to end up. Graduation night, though, she shows up. You ready for her? Here she comes. True story. She gorgeous? Jack Buck. Who'd you expect? Who'd you expect? Oftentimes, she's not what we expect. She's not oftentimes exactly what we expect. She shows up sometimes as a 19-year-old brunette that you're going to meet later on that summer named, named Elizabeth Grace. She's beautiful, but you haven't met her yet. Other times, she shows up as a 75-year-old male named Jack Buck with a great heart, Parkinson's disease, and stage 4 lung cancer. That's sometimes what she looks like. What we all know, though, from our own experiences, from our own lives, is when she shows up in our life, love changes us. And when we show up as love for those lucky enough to be around us, we change them. We change them. That night, Jack Buck came as love with a package and a note. What, what do you think the first word on the note said? <laughs> you got to say that louder, please. Oh, babe, show me some spirit. One more time. Kid. Dude never knew my first name was John. Kid. <laughs> Kid. This means a lot to me. I hope it means a lot to you too. Enjoy. It's yours. So I, I open up this package, look inside. Whew, blows me away. Blows me away. And before I open up this package in front of each of you, I want you to realize the question that led to the gift. It, it led to him having a Hall of Fame career and a Hall of Fame life. It changed his world and those lucky enough to be around him, and it absolutely, absolutely will change ours too. The question that guided his life then and ours, I hope, what more can I do? What more? What one thing? What more can I do? For Sensi, the folks I get to serve on my team, for friends in the community, for family members, for myself, my spiritual journey, my faith life, in my health, with my finances. What more can I do? What more can I do? Okay, I'll try. Kid, this means a lot to me. Hope it means a lot to you too. Enjoy, it's yours. Kid, this is the baseball that I received when I went into the Hall of Fame. Don't drop it, it's priceless. <laughs> he, he gives this heirloom away to a 22-year-old kid who had no clue what he was going to do in life. Changed my world again. His gift of love, in many regards, I think, led to this picture. Because when you have felt such powerful love from those around you, finally, eventually, you might believe in yourself, which finally happened to me, which allowed me to make the greatest sale in my life. Pictured on both screens. And then we enjoyed and opened up one of the greatest gifts in our life. This little boy. <clears throat> named, friends, after one of the greatest individuals in our life. Jack. Jack. <clears throat> little Jack. Jack now has a little brother named Patrick. And when I'm out of town traveling, I, I travel quite a bit for work. My wife hates when I'm gone. So what she does to punish me is she'll take my two handsome little guys, and then she'll dress them. <laughs> like that. <laughs> So when I get home, baby, I, I rip off those dresses. I don't know what else you call them. I get them back in their gear. They think they're power workers, man. They, they, these are great little boys. And I remind those two little boys to love on their little brother, Jack and Patrick, and now Henry. You, you find, by the way, you find if you travel too frequently that two parents who have dark hair Can have a child with blonde hair. That's going to be at our 11th reunion when I come back. We're going to talk about forgiveness. It's going to be a great conversation. 
We need to get the warmers ready, baby. We're going we're gonna to have a blast. I'm blessed, and I got to tell you that the gifts keep showing up. Henry, now we got a little baby girl named Grace. She, she is a handful. <laughs> uh, my kids are healthy. My, my marriage is healthy. Both of my parents are alive. My dad's got Parkinson's disease, but he is the most healthy person I know, alive in the spirit. He is a very good man. I'm blessed. We, look at our country. Look at this stadium. Look at your friends and family members around you. We are fortunate. 